And you got more nervous, right? Or <laughs> so what happens in your heads? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I felt as if you were becoming more and more thinking about how nervous you are yeah. and less and less about the story you were telling. Um, could it be something like this? Yeah. I know because I have this feeling often. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the important thing is, we, s we touched on it with Nika, the, um, the first thing that um, when, when you're nervous, your brain goes so much faster. And when you start with negative thoughts, then they go very fast, very much more negative. And this is not going to help you in a stress situation. We have a whole evening tomorrow, th uh, Thursday, about stress, so I don't want to talk too much about it now. But a very practical um, tip is to have at the top of maybe each page some words that are going to help you get into this piece. That or this page, this character, what is the story you're telling? What is the color of the music? Maybe even use some visual, like if you have some colored pens, to say this is, oh, this is a um, deep purple moment, or this is, a, this is a yellow sunshine moment, or to have some key things that you can focus on more than in practice, that you know, maybe having a list of five things that, okay, the story, the sound, the kind of vibrato, even things like, where are your heels? Where is your waist? Are they on, is your waist on your toes? Is your waist on your heels? How much tension is in, I hold a lot of tension in my <laughs> bottom. <laughs> <coughs> um, so wh where, where do you feel, can you relax your shoulders a little bit? Where is your belly button? Where is the breathing starting from? Because as you get nervous, the breath goes higher and higher and higher, higher and higher, and then you felt more and more uncomfortable. Um, so it, we are all different. We, and maybe every time we're nervous is a little different, um, but we can prepare for it. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole evening on Thursday to talk about uh, stress management. Um, the important thing to realize, and it, I think it's important to know, it's not going to go away, the nerves. It's not going to go away? What? <laughs> <laughs> I remember asking a, a class of young kids, you know, when, when do you think the nerves stop? He was a kid, you know, 12, 13, shaking, shaking, <laughs> couldn't <laughs> hold the flute, and, and and I, I, you know, I said to the class, when do you think, it, when do you not have the nerves? And someone said, when you're really prepared or when you don't try. Okay, yeah, good, good. Someone else said, when you graduate. <laughs> well, it's, it's a nice idea, no? I, now I have my diploma, now I'm never going to be nervous. <laughs> um, so it's, it's not going to go away. But the good news, so that's the bad news. The good news is not only that we can find ways to manage it, but that it actually can help us. I'm sure we've had all had as many experiences when under pressure in a, in a nervous situation that you think, oh my God, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice surprise. You know, because adrenaline gives you superpowers. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline is a superpower, but you need to learn to channel it. Maybe for you, it's more about the mind, what is the story I'm telling? What is the atmosphere? Mm -hmm. What is the color? What, do I, what painting do I see when I'm playing this passage? Or maybe it's more physical. Maybe it's both. The only thing that experience helps with is that you learn your, to get to know yourself better in a pressure situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So are you feeling a little more calm now? Yeah? <laughs> so shall we do the beginning? <laughs> Just 
until here. So what is the atmosphere? Good, yes. And what is the color? Do you have a color in mind? There's not a right answer and a wrong answer. Gray. gray, good, okay. Secret gray. What does the composer tell us? He puts two words. Sans nuance. Yeah, without nuance. He sounded very interesting for something without nuance. <laughs> You were telling a story on this note, and this long note telling a story, and this note. I, I think we can really risk the beginning of this, this piece, because the interesting thing is happening in the piano. So... the beginning it unfolds and maybe we shouldn't be aware when the flute starts but you should be aware not to be late to the first one <laughs> Secret world, secret grey world, it's, that's working much better. Um, there's one thing that's not su sans nuance. <laughs> <laughs> it gives it away. Look, I mean, I'm the last person to say don't move when you play because <laughs> music is made for moving. Music, and music is made for dancing. We, music, we, fee we hear music and... and you know, how many of us have sat in a concert and we want to... <laughs> <laughs> but when it's going against what you're trying to say with the music, your movement, then we don't believe you. We don't believe the sound and we don't believe your body. So we need to find this stronger connection. So if you're trying to create this everlasting no bar lines, it's not 7-8 this music, it's 14-8. And we only have 10 fingers, so we cannot count. So it's really endless line. So if you're making a lot of movement with the body, we don't believe it. Okay? I think w if it was a recording, it wasn't, wouldn't be too bad. But in a concert, it won't work. We don't believe it. <laughs> um, the other thing to take care of is the vibrato. I'm not, I'm not saying don't use vibrato. But can you keep it really inside the note so that we are not as aware of one note suddenly being shiny? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I, I think you can breathe earlier before the first D so that the, you're releasing the sound instead of attacking the first note. Maybe we just can start from bar three is enough. Yeah. <laughs> The bath really start, yeah. Right, un peu en dehors, a little bit outside. So now it's been secret in the beginning. I still think you can make it much more smooth, much more as if there's not a bar line anywhere. You know, with this, this very horizontal, very, dare I say, boring. I think you're afraid of being boring. <laughs> Because it still sounds very interesting, and you have a lovely, sing lovely tone and lovely vibrato, 
but keep it secret. Bring it as figure one. Girarari. It's such a nice theme has been in the piano, and now I want to play the theme. <laughs> Can you show me figure one? No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. This directly flute, figure one. Flute solo. No piano, sorry. <laughs> the first note is the root that the tree is growing out from. So this first A needs. Okay. I talked about it a lot yesterday. The, the longest note becomes the most important. And that's not always the case. So the F is not the most interesting note, no. but it's the time you have to use your best sound. But I would love you to use a, your best sound on the first A, maybe even the vibrato. Mm. Can we try three notes? That's good, one more time. Okay, and now copy this energy with vibrato. No, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. The same energy. No, no, no. So we, we, we play the three. How, how lively can you get that A sounding? Just the A. Ha ha, da da da, and then a little faster, more subtle. But da ha ha, da ha ha. Let's do very exaggerated. When it's too much, we can come back. <laughs> da ha. Oh. Okay. Now. Loud, soft, mm -hmm. loud and interesting, soft and clear, but it's connected legato. Ah, you hear that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have that, please? Every time you have this theme, okay. it means it means in this bar, it means in this bar, it means this bar, this bar, um, <laughs> this bar, this bar, <laughs> this bar, <laughs> this bar. <laughs> Every, every time. <laughs> this sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So then we have a difference between this grey... I played this for my um, uh, Concertgebouw audition. And I really believe the beginning is something like what I, I played before, you know, this very... <laughs> But keep the articulation, by the way, that we can hear something. Something like this. I thought, oh, do I dare play like this in the audition? Then they think, oh my God, terrible sound. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, no, but then I can show them immediately at figure one that I can have a more a, a more carrying piano and a more intense color with vibrato. Mm -hmm. So they have to think for five bars, is that really her sound? Really? She can <laughs> really? <laughs> because then, then at figure one you can show something different. So at the end of today's session, the, 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 the person who should play fourth um, is not coming. So we're going to do, I'm just going to do a little half an hour, 45 minutes about 
what I've learned from being on the other side of the um, audition table. Um, and one of the most important things is, the, is showing your range of, in this case, colors. So you're going from very pale <sighs> to very bright and shiny in a very short time. And then the jury knows you can do it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This was fantastic. Give me one last time. Maybe it was a fluke, I don't know. Legate, legate, legate. Also with your fingers. Squeeze. Yeah, legate, legate. Ah, this is different. What did you do differently? No, I don't. <laughs> now maybe it's getting a little loud for piano because the we want to create this pale, empty, secret, grey beginning piano and then a bright, shiny piano. But actually the dynamic is the same, okay. but just very different meanings. So let, shall we try once more from the beginning? What will help you also create this horizontal line is really thinking there are lots of little counting mistakes it can happen when it's one of the first things that we can lose when we're nervous but please keep thinking because the eighth note keeps going and poor Helga is, is like a kangaroo drum jumping <laughs> from <laughs> bar to bar <laughs> so please keep thinking it will also help you actually to keep this horizontal feeling mm -hmm. yeah let's do it the very beginning once more <laughs> Perfect, just two bars before one. And I don't hear repeated notes. I don't hear repeated notes. It's difficult in this in this colour to you mm -hmm. to hear the repetition, but we need this silence. Same place, two before. about this first note yeah. and you promised me that every time you have this theme you would play with this expression on the first note especially here he writes a new word what is the new word that he gives us vibrato. which means yeah. no means vibrato <laughs> <laughs> yeah so always sunny sunny sounds directly three <laughs>
every bar one eighth note. So keep keep counting. Seven eight. One two one two three 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 one two three. It shows me that you're not really feeling the the groove of the seven eight underneath. There's a long note, and you guess where you have to move. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not convinced that you're really feeling the piano pulse. Do you want to play it once with the piano part? So we do are you reading from this? Does it help you or confuse you? No. Okay, <laughs> good. Can we do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bar of four. After four? Yes, the eighth bar. It's her long A. Yeah. yeah. Then the eye is not uh, um, good. Yeah. Should we do the same place from the A? confused by this marking of tenuto on the first note with the fermata. What does that mean? Why is that there? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Yes. Why is that marked tenuto? Because anyway, it's there's a fermata to say long. Anyway, it's tied over to the next note. So I was always very confused and a few years ago we did um, the opera Peleas Melaison with Stéphane Deneuve conducting and he said when you get this marking in French music it means like a saying wow wow <laughs> it's like a little push it's nothing eh. 
And I wonder whether we can have something happening on that note that is part of the fantasie. But then don't lose the magic on the first fast note. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt you doing something like, um, the A was very good, but the, the B flat version, <laughs> fantasy gone. You know, the color became now here concrete. And I think we can, something like that um, keeping keeping the atmosphere and the color that you have which is beautiful on the fermata maybe you can add this wow moment wow but then stay there until the crescendo is marked that's mm -hmm. funny in my edition I'm sure that the crescendo is marked on the third one mm, maybe not mm. maybe I'm talking rubbish um, let's go from the second fermata, or maybe um, the piano, do two bars before the second fermata. things um, I think maybe even you could breathe be before the plus long but it should sound like someone's playing in the top of the house it should sound like another another voice um, and look at where the diminuendo is marked in a different place in the first one and the second one But anyway, it's not going towards the long note. The long note is not the most important one. From here. Oh, I think you can do that better. You can do that. Better. The softest one should be the last A. slower we still need to keep the pulse mm -hmm. last time So this was the second second tone. Yeah. Somewhere there. vibrato but you're only using your vibrato on every second note so I hear one straight note and then one vibrato note one straight note one vibrato the effect that has is that we don't believe your legato so I think of course we can do m more vibrato less vibrato on I'm not saying it should be absolutely the same then it sounds like a Hammond organ <laughs> we want to try and avoid that um, but 
something needs to keep moving in the sound. Um, and I hear, I heard something like, and then for me, th they don't sound as if they belong together in one sentence. It's like one word of Chinese and one word of Czech. And Chinese and Czech, well, they both begin with C, so it must be the same. <laughs> Not the same. Keep some connection. Who was it who said that music is what happens between the notes? I don't know. Oh no, I think it was someone like Mahler or someone. Really? I think Bernard was. Uh, or maybe I, I have written, uh, I have read it in, in yeah. his book somewhere, yeah. so I yeah. thought maybe. No, I think it's a quote from, from Mahler or Stravinsky like, music is, one note alone is not music. It's how it connects to the next note, if that's a surprise, if that's a, if they are connected harmonically, if they're yeah, but there's always something between the notes which is happening, the connection. Can we just try that one more time um, from the 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 piano bar two bars before? before the E sharp. So the first phrase <laughs> then the next phrase <laughs> so I need to hear something some silence, maybe you don't need to breathe I think I breathe there but it doesn't really matter but we need to hear some new air between those okay. two. Mm -hmm. Same place? didn't get any love and attention at all. <laughs> Please can you give the G-sharp something connection? For me this is there's something like the C-sharp, if you imagine the elastic band, that the C-sharp, I don't know the elastic band, but it, the C-sharp is here, B-sharp is more stretched, more tense, and we come back to relax C-sharp. <laughs> So there's some more tension in the second bar, I think, than the first. Can we do that? Something? Debussy. Oh, Debussy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Claude. <laughs> Thank you for looking it up. <laughs> Only your the top line of music, you you're making up the rest. The piano has the whole score is here. The whole story is here. You are just part of the story. So please practice from the piano part because you don't know it. It's the same exactly the same material. She finishes on C sharp. Then your your version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're stepping on her tail. rather loud. Um, we don't, we had this poco crescendo in the second phrase, but maybe that happens automatically on the flute. 
so we don't have to do maybe pochissimo crescendo. Molto cantabile does not mean loud. What does it mean? Fancy. No, lots of vibrato. <laughs> 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 um, but look in the piano part, it's pianissimo. So can we find something, this singing, you're right, of course, singing, <laughs> but singing with a lot of vibrato. <laughs> um, but in this, still in more of the piano espressivo character that we started this um, movement in. Because the crescendo poco a poco is then coming, coming more and more. Um, I think it's too loud too soon. And then it gets a little <coughs> muscular and um, I think that's not quite reachier. We do one more time from um, di da 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 one and a half bars before seven. Yeah, there. Because at the moment, seven is quite loud and then uh, we collapse a little bit before we build up again. Uh -huh. And I think a little bit like we did with the Mozart, trying to think of these longer phrases, we where we start at six is piano dolce, poco crescendo, next phrase, next phrase molto cantabile, just means more vibrato, and then we have the crescendo taking us to the end of that movement into the third movement. Yeah? Good. So please practice from the piano part. It will help you. It's there to help you. Mm -hmm. Do you have the piano part? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, please use it because there's more information there mm -hmm. than uh, which which will just help you. It will help you with the uh, understanding of how the the phrase works. It will un help you understand what's happening musically. Who is the most important voice? Who's the what the pulse is, how to divide the seven, eight, um, all these kind of things. Yeah? yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.